One of the questions I see a lot is whether or not you can use a power station to power your little off-grid cabin. Now, to clarify that little off-grid cabin, we're not talking about a great big mansion in the woods. So can you use a power station as your power for your little off-grid vacation cabin, hunting cabin, or whatever it is you've got? And to answer that first, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how I started out and how that influenced what I'm about to tell you today. So I started with six flooded lead acid golf cart batteries, which gave me between 2,000 and 4,000 watt hours of usable power. Now, why just 2,000 to 4,000? Well, that's because flooded lead acid batteries are rated at 50% depth of discharge, meaning you only drain them 50%, and that rating tells you how many times you can do that, and they are typically between two to 300 cycles. That means that if you were to drain them halfway down, you could do it for 200 to 300 times. So I think if you had a cabin that you were only going to a few times a year, those might last a very long time. But the reality is you're going to find that you will drain them more. And every time you drain them considerably more than that, you actually can cut their cycle life in half, meaning that completely draining those batteries can practically kill the batteries. So you don't wanna do that. And in order to extend the life of those batteries, well, you can only really use about 25% of the total capacity that you build. And that's one of the confusing things, I think, for people that are looking at batteries and they look at those lead acid batteries and they think, well, come on, it's got 220 amp hours. That's a lot of power, right? But the truth is you can really only count on about half of that. And in order to get long life out of those batteries, try about 25%. So if when I built my cabin, I only used about 25% of the total capacity that I had. That was about 2,000 watt hours. If I went ahead and I used half of that battery capacity, that would be 4,000 watt hours. That's all I had. Now, I did find that with that system, I ran a generator almost every day, sometimes twice a day, depending on the time of year. Now, I did have 615 watts of solar, so I could certainly get them charged back up to a degree, as long as I had plenty of sun, but the generator was a backup that I just couldn't get by without. So now let's get to power stations. Can you use a power station to run your cabin? Depending on what you're trying to do, you could get away with something like a 2,000 watt hour power station and maybe a 2,400 watt inverter, and you could easily manage a weekend at a cabin with a system like that, especially with a few good choices. For example, one of the things I did is I put in an electric refrigerator. Though it was small and it didn't have a freezer compartment, which would have added another compressor and therefore a lot more power usage, so it was fairly efficient, but the reality is you could put in a propane refrigerator that uses almost no power. That would really help quite a bit because the refrigerator is one of my biggest draws at the cabin. So that means that with a 2000 watt power station, if you put in a propane refrigerator, well guess what? You could probably get by with about 500 watts of solar and make it through the weekend without needing a generator too much. But I would not get a 2000 watt hour power station if I also didn't plan to have a generator and at least 500 watts of solar. Because I know that at different times a year, you're just not gonna get maximum solar production and you need to have an alternate means to keep that power station topped up. Now, one of the things you can do, and I have seen this quite a bit, is you go to an RV kind of wrecking yard place and find a good used RV refrigerator and you can then get that refrigerator running on propane on just a five gallon propane bottle and that actually works fairly well and uses a lot less power. So a 2000 watt hour power station is probably gonna do very well to run say some LED lights, charge up your phones, maybe even run a television for a very short period of time because modern televisions don't really use that much power. As long as you're not putting in an 80 inch TV, you're gonna be fine. But would I recommend using a 2000 watt hour power station? And the answer is not really. A 2000 watt hour power station will work. And if you've got say a generator that you can bring along with it to back it up when the power goes down or do what I did. If I wanted to watch say a movie or something, maybe it was the middle of winter, it's dark, it's snowy, I've ran out of books to read, 
and I decided it's time to watch The Lord of the Rings. You've been summoned here to answer the threat of Mordor. I'm a Lord of the Rings fan from way back in the 70s, folks, and I enjoy those movies. What I would do is I would fire up my generator so that it was charging up those batteries while I was watching the movie. That way I wasn't draining my batteries during that heavy usage. You would have very limited generator use. You'd be powering up your power station and running those higher draw items as long as the generator's big enough to do that. Now a 3000 watt hour power station is going to get you much, much closer to what you need. And in one of my recent tests, I had a Jackery Home Power Plus 3600 with almost 3600 watt hours of power. And that actually ran my refrigerator all weekend long without any issue at all. So I'm actually quite confident that with the full thousand watts of solar that it can take, I could actually run my cabin on that Jackery unit and be successful all weekend long doing just fine. Now, would I try to live there for a year like that? No, I would not. Because I know that over time, you're just gonna have those days where you're either gonna have to run a generator an awful lot, or you need way more solar than the thousand watts of solar that that unit can take. I think that for long-term use, a do-it-yourself off-grid power system is much better because you could put in 10,000 watt hours of batteries and even just an all-in-one system that has the inverter, the charger, the solar charge controller, and all that built into it. It's kind of like, a power station where you add your own battery, one of those units would do far better for running your cabin over the weekend. And certainly if you were gonna be there for a week and it happened to be snowing the whole time, that way you're gonna have a lot more potential power to get you through multiple days without having to run your generator. And of course, you can always add to it later because that is another problem with power stations. Even the power stations that have expansion battery ports aren't as configurable or as scalable as a do-it-yourself system. But the rule of thumb is really quite simple, folks. The smaller the power station, the more likely you're going to need a generator and need it for longer than you might otherwise want. Larger power stations are heavier and harder to move around, though that Jackery, for example, and a lot of power stations that physical size with that much battery backup have wheels and handles to make them easier to pull around and get from place to place. And one really nice thing about power stations for off-grid cabins is you take them home with you when you go. So if somebody decides to go to your cabin when you're not there and liberate items that you've left there, well, you don't have to worry about your expensive power station because you took it home with you. Of course, there's always things that you have to try to consider, but you could certainly run a small cabin if you're being very energy conscious on a smaller power station, like say some of the 2000 watt hour power stations that I've reviewed, just be aware that you're not gonna run that 80 inch big screen TV and a DV player and a big stereo system while running a refrigerator with a freezer on AC power, <laughs> you know, and having an electric stove. It's just not gonna work out very well. So just be conscious of how much power you really need you could get away with a small one. My personal recommendation is to look for something in the three to 4,000 watt hour range because those will do pretty well. And though I can use that much power overnight, I got plenty of solar to charge it back up. And truthfully, I don't really use that much power out there, but I built my system to run for five days with no solar. And that's all there is to it, folks. If you're building a cabin in the woods or you're thinking about building a cabin in the woods, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you're up to. And if you have any questions, don't be shy. Go ahead and ask them. And folks, if this video helped you out, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. It helps the channel out and I really appreciate it. And speaking of appreciating things, thanks to all my members. Thank you so much for being here and supporting the channel. Keeps me going. Thank you very much for that. Meanwhile, folks, I'll drop another video right over here just for you to check out. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Y'all have a great day. The old jarhead out.